Hello guys and welcome to this video about silicoxib. Silicoxib is a drug from the nesites, non-steroids, anti-inflammatory drugs and it is came to medical use in the 1999 and in this video I'm going to talk about the trade name for this drug, the pill shape and colors, the mechanism of action, the indications, and finally, the adverse effects. So, let's start. Uh, so, the trade name for this drug is Silibrax. And this is the famous trade name that comes from the Visor uh, company. And the packaging also look, look like uh, this uh, and it also has uh, different trade names according to uh, to different companies that produce it but this is the famous one now for the pill shape and colors so the pill has a cylinder shape with two hemispherical ends uh, and it is a white pill with 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 bands and the bands has different colors according to the dose of the drug so gold bands are with the 200 milligram pill red bands are with the uh, with the uh, 50 milligram pill and blue bands are with the 100 milligram pill yeah so that's for the pill shape now for the mechanism of action for this drug so Silibrax is highly selective cyclooxygenase enzyme type 2 inhibitor from the non-steroids anti-inflammatory drugs group uh, so and the question that comes into mind here why would we create a highly selective cyclooxygenase enzyme type 2 inhibitor uh, and to answer this question we need to go back to the basics so cyclooxygenase enzyme 2 is expressed during inflammation and it is responsible for the pain and fever that comes with it and COX-1 is expressed normally and it has a lot of functions like the secretion of mucus that protects the stomach and the prostaglandin mediated autoregulation of the renal system. So the non-selective nesites inhibited both of those enzymes here. And that led to side effects on the stomach and kidneys and other organs because of inhibition of the COX-1 leads, uh, leads to these side effects. Uh, yeah, so uh, that made the idea of creating a drug that inhibit only the COX-2. So there would be only inhibition for the inflammation and pain and fever that comes with the inflammation. And the COX-1 is, is still expressed. So there is normal kidney and stomach and other organs functions. And that's why Silibrax was made. Yeah, so... Uh, in the practice, there was fewer side effects regarding the GIT and renal system, and that was expected. But there was increase in the cardiovascular events, like the myocardial infarctions and strokes, which did, didn't happen with the non-selective nesites. And the question now that that comes into my, to, into mind, why? there was an increase in the cardiovascular events because of the silicoxib drug. And to answer this question, I have this figure here that explain this even more. So, uh, let's go back to the basics. So, in inflammation starts with a stimulus and that stimulus leads to disturbance in the cell membrane and 
as we know, cell membrane contains phospholipids. So when it gets disturbed, it releases these phospholipids, which are which contain arachidonic acid in them. So the arachidonic acid will be free here. And arachidonic acid is converted to leukotrienes by lipoxygenase enzyme, which also induce inflammation, but that's not our topic today. Our topic is about the COX-2 and COX-1 enzymes. So ar arachidonic acid is converted to prostaglandins that is involved in inflammation, and that's by the COX enzyme, cyclooxygenase enzyme type 2. And it also converted to the prostocycline, which is protective against thrombotic events. And that's also caused by the COX-2. The COX-1 is responsible for converting arachidonic acid into thromboxane A2, which induce platelet aggregation. Uh, so why would silicoxib uh, increase the, the events of the, cardi the cardiovascular events like myocardial infarctions and strokes? So silicoxib inhibits COX-2 and that leads to less prostaglandins and less pain and fever and that's like the favorable effect of the silicoxib. But when it inhibits COX-2, it also inhibits prostocycline, which is, which is found in the lining of the blood vessels, and it, it helps relaxing those blood vessels and helps to, uh, to relax the red blood cells and make them unstick from the blood vessel wall. So it is protective against thrombotic events. But when it is inhibited by silicoxib, this, this lead to increase of the thrombotic events. But there is also another theory here. So this is one theory because of the prostaglandin inhibition, or prostacycline inhibition, sorry. But the other theory is that when, when we inhibit the COX-2 pathway here, so there is no prostaglandin or prostacycline, the COX-1 pathway is going to be upregulated here. And as we know, COX-1 is responsible for the thromboxane A2, which leads to induce, induce platelet aggregation. So there would be more platelet aggregation and would be more, uh, more uh, thrombotic events. So two theories. The first one is about COX-2. The second one is about the upregulation of COX-1. And that's for the mechanism of action for silicoxib. Now let's go to the indications. So silicoxib work very well with the arthritis. So we can see silicoxib working with osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and kylosing spondylitis. And it also works very well with the acute pain and the primary dysmenorrhea. Yeah, so that's for the indications. Now for the adverse effects of silicoxib. So silicoxib has a lot of, adv uh, of adverse effects and I'm going to explain each of those in details. So let's start. So the cardiovascular thrombotic events, which is the first one here, I explained the mechanism of it in the, in the mechanism of action of this drug. Yeah, so it has two theories, as I said before. Uh, but to decrease these side effects, uh, you need to use the lowest effective dose for silicoxib and the for the shortest duration possible. And also, you should follow your patients uh, for the thrombotic events that comes with the silicoxib. Now for the GIT side effects, now that's lesser or it, it happens in fewer incidents than the non-selective nesites because uh, as we said, it is selective to the COX-2 and there would be less gastrointestinal side effects, but it is still happen in 20% of patients. Yeah, so 
it is still possible to have GIT side effects in 20% of patients. Uh, now for the hepatotoxicity. So silicoxib causes hepatotoxicity in 1% of patients. And that's because that silicoxib is metabolized by the liver. So there would be a mild uh, hepatic injury to 1% to of the patients, and that's identified by the increase of ALT and AST three times the upper normal value. Yeah, and that's indicate the mild hepatic injury, but the severe injury, the severe hepatic injury occur in, in rare occasions, and when it happens, uh, the drug should be stopped. Uh, so the other side effects that comes with with silicoxib is that new onset or worsening of the existing hypertension. So silicoxib cause hypertension because of COX-2 inhibition lead to less vessel elasticity and when used with some uh, hypertensive drugs, there would be impaired action of these drugs. So when, uh, when using silicoxib with the thiazide and lubidiuretics and the ACE inhibitors, those drugs would have impaired action uh, because of the silicoxib interaction with these drugs. And that leads to hypertension. Yeah, so that's for the hypertension. Now for the heart failure and edema. So that's because of the fluid retention that happened because of the silicoxib drug, and that increased the rate of heart failure and edema in patients. Renal toxicity, uh, and it still happens in silicoxib, uh, in patients who take silicoxib, but it, it is in a fewer incidence than the non-selective nesides. And it happens more in patients who already have existing impaired renal function uh, or patients who have uh, a, a heart failure or liver disease or hypovolemia. Yeah. For the hyperkalemia, it happens even with patients who don't have impaired renal function. So it is, uh, it is possible to have hyperkalemia with silicoxin. And the other side effects here, the anaphylactic reactions. Uh, and, those, uh, and those happen uh, with or without Celebrex allergy. Uh, and it ranges from uh, mild asthmatic attacks to a life-threatening uh, severe anaphylaxis, anaphylactic shock. And finally, for the hematological toxicity, uh, and that's anemia that happened in patients because of the loss of blood from the GIT system because of the GIT side effects. And it also happened because of the fluid retention and the effects on the erythropoiesis. Yeah, and that's it, guys, for this drug. Please make sure to like and subscribe and also comment and see you in the next video.